Fancy you're going under the knife today. So this morning my fifth wheel wouldn't release. Cause I'm parked off to the side a little bit on my property and it kind of slopes up. So the truck's been sitting here for a while and the bag's probably dropped a little bit on the trailer. Usually when that happens and you can't pull your fifth wheel release, release your brakes on the tractor and then it'll come out. Cause sometimes it just gets bound up and you gotta take the tension off of it. Sometimes dropping the landing gear will help, sometimes not. When you get to the pickle, don't get frustrated. Sometimes you just gotta release or sometimes drop the bags. But in my case, that wasn't gonna help. So, release the brakes on a tractor and I'll usually come free. Or the fifth wheel will usually come free. There's our guy. He's got to go bye bye. Then. this whole deal so drainer coolant down there turbo's gotta come off intake piping's gotta come off that manifold's gotta come off as you can see you can see there's cracks in it on both sides so unfortunately we gotta replace it I can do all this work, but uh, let's get after it. Let's see what we got. Here. Let's suck like a compressor to me. Well, that makes you feel better. Genuine Cummins legendary. Legendary. That's it for gear. Looks the same. Yeah, that's the same compressor. All right. Yep. So we'll get this guy painted up. I. Oh man, screwed up because I don't have any buckets to drain my coolant into. So we're gonna take this uh, Jolly Green Giant over here. I'm gonna put some AC free on in it because. I had a leak and I need to see where it's coming from. So I'm going to put some more in. Maybe it stops. And the previous owner told me I had a leak, so I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying that I got to fix that as one of the things that was wrong with the truck. But I'm going to have to go around into town and get me some buckets so I can drain the coolant in it. Because I don't want to contaminate our coolant. And sorry, it's hot and this is heavy. So I'm sobbing like a, like a big old fatty. Yeah. Our guy down there looks good. Um, not sure if we're going to get around to replacing that today because the turbo and the manifold is actually going to be quite a bit of work. So I think before I go, I'm going to paint these guys up because I got paint Cummins red. So it matches, you know, I want it to look, I want it to look halfway decent on when I open the hood. So we're going to paint it and then we're going to let it cure. And in the meantime, we're going to go and get our stuff. Well, we're going to go get a bucket. That's what we're going to do. Twelve gallons of fruit punch. We got the hot side intercooler pipe off already. Now we're just draining some coolant. This guy, we're going to start unhooking all this wiring here. The power or the electrical for the uh, actuator here and it's all zip tied the harness is zip tied and we're gonna, we're gonna start taking all this stuff apart and get this turbo off of here back in the olden days you didn't have to drain coolant to take the turbocharger off in the new one days yeah you have to because it's all water cooled this turbo this this right here is the actuator and what this is is it controls these veins inside here 
it makes it smaller or bigger basically that's the you know perfect explanation of it for it when engine rpm is low and demand is high and you mash on it these clothes make this housing small inside these veins small they're direct exhaust right in at the turbine wheel and it spools it a lot faster hence less smoke hence better emissions that's why these are called variable geometry turbochargers and this actuator controls these veins inside here so what they do is basically imagine a bunch of veins all the way around this thing going ch -ch -ch -ch, that's all they do and when they're open it makes the turbo you know as big as it is wide open when you're pulling the grade and you're like 1700 rpm 1800 these are open so that this exhaust is flowing completely through it without any restriction when they're when your rpm gets slow or your rpm starts to drop and you don't want to downshift they start to close therefore maintaining the same boost pressure or even higher boost pressure at low rpms now that's not necessarily the best thing for engines because high boost low rpm equals boom a lot of torque that's how torque is made and you know sometimes sometimes the torque is uh gets so to the point where <laughs> that's too much and it'll cause problems so there's our water line and as you see there's coolant coming out of that turbo and we're going to take this gasket off because we're going to reuse these these are reusable as long as they don't look bad they're reusable now all we have is a uh we're going to attack it from the underside oh you heard those knees popping jesus so this is the oil feed we're going to disconnect that and this is the oil drain return and we're going to disconnect that now i think we're going to replace these gaskets or this gasket here because that might leak oil but uh the coolant one should be okay so we're going to go ahead and get after that and hopefully get this turbocharger removed here in a second and this thing's heavy too with that actuator these these turbos are really heavy yeah i want to say oh man 90 to 100 pounds is what this guy weighs all right so you got see that little stud there you got the back nuts off same thing over here and then we got these two and then the turbo comes right off now what i really like about cummins is that these are just nuts and everything is studded so there's two studs in the turbo in the front here like so right here in the turbo housing and then the back two studs are um uh, in the manifold so what's nice about that is it makes it a lot easier to mount this by yourself now it's a lot easier if you have a hand but you can do it you can do it by yourself it's doable it's uh dealerships they i think they used to have, they use like a little crane and stuff but this is doable so these are 18 millimeters yes it's metric and uh we're gonna undo these two guys and then the turbo will be off it's free so this is a line this is a coolant line again one this guy goes here this guy goes up there and our oil returns disconnected this is our oil feed this is what oil galley that feeds the oil and we'll cover all these parts up once we get the turbo off so no debris gets in it and then this is our downpipe it's fixed right now we got it undone so it's loose but the reason why is these things have what's called a seventh injector back here and coolant runs through it so it's kind of fixed stationary right now because all these lines are hooked up to it and this is what sprays fuel down this exhaust downstream for these things to do a regen so they burn off the ash in the dpf filter so that's your seventh injector and guys if you don't clean that guy out at least once a year it gets plugged up with carbon and it won't do a regen sometimes when your truck smokes really white and it's doing a regen it'll also uh not perform the regen because it's it's not dosing properly or it's dosing too much and it's flooding the it's it's just flooding the system so we don't really have that problem anymore but if you know what i mean yeah let's get this guy off She's loose and she's off oh, 100 pounds of crap hard to see but that right there that's your seventh injector that's where it sprays 
It's good practice just to clean that out every once in a while. Uh, all right, let's get this manifold off now. All right, so you see this cluster now. It's actually not too bad. Um, this is the EGR cooler. Now, if anybody's wondering why that's like that, this is an EGT probe. And on these EGR motors, they never get that hot, especially with the variable vane turbo. So all this is, is basically, I'm measuring heat soak on the manifold. That's what that, that's why that's just clamped to the manifold. And uh, yeah, it's, I might redo that. It might, I might just put my thermocoupler in there and put it in there. Um, so now we're gonna undo this U-pipe. And you see, these are slip joints. So there's little gaskets in there or like o-rings that go around and i'm not sure if that's all that's leaking but you can clearly see that and all that see how black that is it's uh it might even be this bellow but i i uh seeing that i have all this stuff here on it as you can see it might be the it might be this number one cylinder too leaking a little bit now we got a whole new manifold and it's gonna look a lot cleaner without all this crap uh so we're gonna take this guy off lay it on top of here this is our nice tool bench nice and flat cat guys be jealous that's right at least the engine on top of the motor is flat 50 millimeters all these these are all getting replaced with arp hardware they're a lot harder you don't want to reuse those um you can reuse these because they're studs but these you don't want to reuse because they're just uh they're bolts and they can break and they do break on these ISXs. Actually, then the newer ISXs, the ISX 15, they break a lot. So, or the X15, I'm not sure if the X15 still does it, but these break a lot. So you want to want to replace them. So we got these a little loose and look at the manifold. I don't know if you can see that on camera. It's, this shouldn't move around that much. So I wouldn't be surprised if that seal is totally blown out. And then those cracks, that one, as you can see right there, is getting pretty bad. So that's why we're taking this off. We're gonna replace this whole manifold and this is gonna be different. million plus miles I know you guys probably can't see but usually the engine of this age will have a lot of uh, like this one has a little bit of a leaky valve seal just a tiny bit but that's you know normal usually you'll see you know oil in there and stuff like that that just goes to tell me that this engine's pretty healthy still so we're gonna cover up these ports and you can see how black it was over here. We're gonna clean these up later when we get to reinstalling. Let's do a little touch up, huh? Coming back together. She sure is. Looks like a good old signature 600. I just gotta put her manifold back on and send it. So I think we're good for today. Looks good to me. Uh, that was quite a bit of work. Well, 
It's time consuming because I don't you don't want to use an impact on any of this stuff because you're working on all this exhaust stuff. You don't want to break stuff off in the block and then you'll be screwed, you know. So slow go and you know, I have to use a cheater bar on the on the bolts for the um exhaust manifold because again you don't want to break those in the head, then you're gonna have a fun time trying to get out getting all those out. So yeah, giving fancy a little bit of a refresher here and fixing some exhaust leaks and hopefully maybe gaining a couple of tenths mile per gallon because of that exhaust leak as you saw it was pretty bad like all that right there that was covered in suit so pick it up pick it up pick it up pick it up you see the drippy i'm fitted up hop in my car and the giddy up secure the bag yeah i get the bus pick it up pick it up pick it up you see the drippy i'm fitted up hop in my car and the giddy up secure the bag